Hello, the ethical dilemma that I will be discussing is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. And the sources that I have used and that you are able to find information about this are CNN News, Fox News, really any news channel has talked about this topic, as well as um, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, any newspaper, as well as um, websites such as Wikipedia and other journal, journal articles. Um, they've all discussed this topic. And the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals allows the minors of immigrants who were either born in the U.S. or brought to the U.S. when they were a child to get a renewed two-year deferred action from deportation and a work permit. And the qualifications for this are that the applicant must not have any felonies, they must be younger than 31 years old, came to the U.S. when they were 16 years or younger, have been in the U.S. since the year 2007, and also have a high school diploma or GED. There is an application fee as well of $495. However, if the applicant is wanting to travel abroad, say for work, school, um, medical reasons, then they must pay an additional $575. And um, just because um, someone is eligible for this, um, meets all the requirements, that does not guarantee that they're going to get granted this and therefore may have to face deportation. As well as um, with the high fees, not many immigrants have been able to afford it. Um, now the this dilemma impacts several different systems and um, people. It affects children and families especially children who are innocent and they were, they've they grown up here in the United States. This is the only country they know, and yet they might have to get deported back to a country that they've never even possibly visited um, just because their parents are illegal. And so there is a dilemma there, as well as um, with the mental health status of children, DACA has greatly improved that. Um, a study has been shown that um, children whose moms have received DACA, uh, they, it has brought less stress and anxiety to the families, whereas um, when a family does not have a DACA recipient, then um, there's a lot of stress and anxiety of not knowing whether your dad or your mom might have to be deported at any time at any given moment. And so DACA has greatly improved the mental health of, the ch of children. And um, another area system that DACA has impacted and this dilemma has as well is um, the economy. DACA has decreased unemployment and increased the income of illegal immigrants. Um, DACA ha recipients are less likely to live in poverty and have better skills and higher paying jobs than illegal immigrants do. And another study has shown that if DACA was, ha is ended and no longer exists, then the U.S. is going to lose an estimated of $283 billion um, in loss of jobs and, in, and um, productivity income. Uh, so that area is greatly impacted by this dilemma as well. Now, a key challenge on how to resolve this is first of all determining if it is unlawful or unconstitutional or not. Um, in the case of uh, Texas versus the U.S., it was brought to court that the president did not enforce the immigration laws in the Article 2 of the Constitution. And um, the court was divided in half about... Um, this situation because they could not determine if it really was unlawful or if it was a good thing. Um, the Republican Party determined it was an abuse of executive power, 
saying that um, they claim that the president can't just make up any uh, laws that he he wants to, and he can't waive immigration laws. And so it has been a dilemma and a discussion of whether or not this is ethical, and um, that has been one of the major challenges of this uh, dilemma. Now the social work values that are present in this dilemma are social ju justice. Um, this uh, dilemma could be seen as being unjust to immigrants who are vulnerable and oppressed. And another value that can be seen as dignity and worth of persons um, treat, to treat all people with respect no matter their ethnicity. Um, so it could also be debated that um, there's discrimination against those of a different culture who um, have not become legal citizens. So that brings me to the discussion questions for the class. Um, my first question would be, what will bring an ultimate end solution to illegal immigrants? And is this just a social worker's job to figure this out? Is it um, just for law enforcement to figure out? Or should we as a whole nation uh, be trying to better this and to help the immigrants become legal? My second question would be is, if the process of becoming a citizen was quicker or easier or less of a hassle, would more immigrants become citizens or would it cause more harm to the U.S. Um, if it wasn't as thorough or um, lengthy as it usually is, would that cause more harm than good to the U.S.?